today we're going to start with the top fuel eight. <clears throat> okay, this is the 2020 top fuel. Got it out here in the black and purple. It's a, a nice looking color. Um, if you haven't looked into the new top fuels, they've changed things up this year. A little more travel, more similar to the older Fuel EXs now. A little slacker, very comfy bike to ride. I actually took one out for a demo. So I'm right here. I took the red and black one. We have both in stock, so it's kind of nice we get to pick and choose. Only one in demo. This thing has definitely changed up from its previous racer years. Um, if anyone rode one of the old ones, um, you'll know it was kind of an aggressive geometry, not very comfy to ride. It was fast, but not easy to ride. So you had to want it to, to use it. Um, with the new one, they've slacked out the geometry. It fits and feels a bit more like the older Fuel EXs. Um, got a little bit less travel then a fuel, a little bit more than a top fuel, so you're onto a 120 on the front fork on the RockShox there, and then a 115 of rear travel. So nice complimentary setup. Um, it can race, but it's actually a good trail bike. I rode this one in the, the remote lockout twist shift is really fast, really responsive. So this, if you haven't used it before, fits really well with the grip really easy to use i found on the climbs you were really playing with it a lot locking in and out and um, still a fairly clean setup with the one by shift um, so you've got the dropper post set up there it is the bontrago one which i have no issues with you do get a small amount of seat play but i i don't think anyone notices it really when you're riding i think details on these new ones are really nice They've done a good job. Interesting spec to the SRAM NX. So you've got the 1x12. Um, definitely surprised they didn't put um, Shimano stuff on there. Again, with a lot of the models Trek doing this year, they are getting rid of the uh, second pivot point. So it's all fixed there. 29 by 2.4 on the rear. Um, XR3, so this is a more trail ready tire than Okay, I got another bike. Um, we're gonna do a quick little walk around on the brand new 2020 Fuel EX5. Fuel EX5 is probably one of our most popular bikes. Um, you spend any less money and you just don't get a worthwhile full suspension in my mind. The rear suspension is not of good enough quality that there's any point to having it, really. Um, and that's why I kind of recommend Fuel X5. I've seen cheaper ones, you know, you get them in a thousand dollars less. It really, it really is just not worth the money. You may as well get a higher end hardtail, especially now with all the bigger wheel size options um, and then save up and then jump up to the Fuel X5 kind of level price range wise. So with all the Fuel Xs now, they're getting rid of that down pivot there. It's going to a single point. Um, with the Fuel X5, you're just getting the 10 speed, which works well, it works efficiently. It's an 11 to 42, so you are still getting good, good range. You just lose some of the increments that the older bikes, anything with a 2 by or 3 by used to have. You'd have lots of fine little increments. Go into a 1 by whether it's a 1 by 12 or a 1 by 10 whatever the case, or a 1 by 9 you just lose increments. Um, with the Eagle system and the new 52 from Shimano, you definitely still get that super low granny gear, um, but not having it, it's not the worst thing in the world. You may have to hike a bike at one point. Um, they're sucking this up really well with the RockShox Deluxe Select. It has the slow and high speed, so you can go to the softer terrain or harder terrain. So they just went to a little cheaper of a dropper post here. Still does the same job as any other drop post. Maybe a little slow reacting, a little harder to push down, but it's hard to notice, to be honest, unless you're comparing side by side. It's a drop post, it works. Once you have it, you'll want it forever. It's a nice looking bike. It's nice that they went to the air shock on the new ones so they are a little lighter in the front end just a little more responsive um, yeah race face crank which just 
more for looks. Saves a bit of weight, but everyone likes that. Um, they do have the flip chip, which is nice. So you can flip it around, get a steeper or slacker head tube out angle. It actually makes a difference. I didn't think it would make a difference, but I've tried it. I've rode about 10K on a trail in the low position and 10K in the high position, and I switched it halfway in between, so it was a 20K ride. Instantaneously, after switching it halfway, 10K in, switch it, 10K back, it felt like a whole different bike. It did not feel like the same bike. So definitely play with it if you've got it. If you've never used it, um, it's worth a little touch. And there we have it. As requested, we have a Powerfly. It's a 2019. We do have the 2020s that just not built yet. So I will do a review on a 2020. Um, once they're built, but until then, to be honest, there's not much changed about them. Powerflies are a pretty sick bike. If you've never rode an e-bike, um, they work well, they're fun. Um, I'd be tempted to get one myself. Um, they do have the Bosch motor in them, kind of hidden away in the bottom there. Huge protector on the underside. You know, you need that protection if you're going to be going off trails. Battery on them is all integrated. This is the 500 watt battery, but they do come in bigger sizes. Uh, Shimano Dior drivetrain on this one. So again, they shift like a regular bike. They ride like a regular bike. You're buying, you know, a $2,000, maybe. You're buying a high-end hardtail, essentially. Not a crazy high-end, but a hardtail, and then you're paying a couple grand for the electric kit it is nice it works well if you've never used the Bosch system before they do work well they boot up fast and um, this one's got a little bit of miles you got eco mode touring mode e-mountain bike mode which is a cool one they introduced that early last year and turbo mode which is the fastest um, they have a walk assist mode, which is cool. So you press the walk button and then that, and then the back wheel actually starts going. And it only goes a slow pace, but the idea is if you're pushing this up the hill or something like that, you know, you're not pushing 50 pounds of bike up that hill. So we're in off mode, so range will say zero. As you go up to eco mode with a pretty full battery, we're getting nearly 90, and this is in kilometers range. Um, we've had no complaints with it. Touring mode, 55, e-mountain bike. This one's clever. Um, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. And turbo mode, so this is you maxed out. It's still an impressive 40 kilometers an hour. That's giving you full 500%. Like, it's going, it's flying, it's a very easy pedal. Any hill is, is mildly effortless. If you've never rode an e-mountain bike, they do require pedaling power. You do have to pedal. As you pedal, it takes in the wattage of what you're pedaling and amplifies it a percentage based on the mode you're on. <laughs> it's complicated. So they put a regular fork on here. This is a rock truck fork, but to make it e-mountain bike rated, any sort of pressures you put in here, you actually add 10 PSI, and that is just to accommodate for the weight of the battery, the weight of the motor. Um, you do have an access port around here to charge it by. A little heard. Um, or you can remove the battery and charge it that way. This is obviously the Performance CX line, so it is one of the highest end ones you can get um, in North America anyway. And right now, there is a bigger battery out and a bigger wattage battery, I think on the new 29, oh, 2020s. 250 watt max speed of 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. So with all e-mountain bikes, again, to make them a little bit better, they put a larger size rotor on front and rear compared to a similar spec mountain bike. This allows the extra weight to be handled a little more efficiently in the stopping. 
everything they do is to make e-mountain biking feel like mountain biking. They do put comfy grips on here, which is a nice little touch. No dropper post on this model. Show you how to show you how to remove that battery kit. Just need to find the right key. In our chaos of organization. Simply slides in. Turn the key, and it pops out. I have to catch it there. Pops out. Then this clip, you push down, push that down, pull the battery out. Then it becomes a handle, falls out. It's not the lightest battery in the world, but there you can see the integration. Um, for travel, I know a lot of people take out the battery, put it on car racks and stuff. Otherwise, you do need the high-end car racks to allow for the weight of it. Uh, take out the battery. You don't get a cover, though, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, so this is all exposed when traveling with it off. Uh, but it definitely shaves some weight. And we can find out how much exactly. We are at like three and a, just over three kgs. All right, so I think three bikes per video is a pretty healthy amount. Um, let me know which ones you wanna see next. Again, I can do quick walk arounds on just about anything. I will be doing the Norco Fluid VLT. I will be doing the full suspension e-bikes. Uh, I'll be doing them all and um, yeah But if you want one if you want one faster than another just let me know and I'll find it I'll do it and um, we do have Merlin fives here. I know a lot of people are interested in those We could do one of those really quick A lot of people like this bike. It's probably one of our best-selling bikes around yeah hydraulic disc brakes with these models, you know, it's Good braking, it does its job well. You do get the three by on the Merlin five. So three on the front, seven on the back. It's definitely worth an upgrade to a Merlin six to go to that two by eight. Way cleaner, chain is under more tension, less noise by the chain. Everything about it, it's just more pleasing, right? You do lose a teeny bit of range. So if you're very new into cycling, having that additional range by a three by, it will be better. It's a nice bike though. It does its job. A nice simple fork. No adjustabilities. I know some people play with these reloads, preload. I'd recommend just leaving them where they're at. Um, unless you're a really big guy, you could turn them up a little bit. No more than two clicks. They have lots of mount points, so you can end up putting racks, fenders, whatever you need to it couple bottle cage mounts to it but it's a light bike um, and it does well it is a more relaxed geometry so you're not gonna be in an uncomfy position they are half made that you could commute from the trail do a trail and come back if you're looking to do downhill courses head to Whistler this is not the bike for you if you're just looking to go on your local home-built trails Hit him pretty good. You can do it on this bike. It is a very capable bike. It will hold itself together. It's more than five. Comfort first, performance second, but to be honest, it's a it's a well-performed machine. Um, and it comes in like three different colors this year. Five if you include the two women's color. So it is actually, there's lots of choices there. Um, the men's and women's this year, they don't have any geometry change between it. It's just the seat. So keep an eye out for that. Um, some of the handlebars are a little different size, but that you're gonna probably cut down anyway. Every bike comes with super wide bars now. So you're gonna need to figure out whether you like those 780 mil wide bars up to 800, or if you're cutting them down to a more 760, seems like the go-to for most people. 
this is this is where we're at with bikes now plugged into a computer charging save that one for another day so that's the Merlin 5 it's a nice bike it's clean looking they've got all the integrated cables down the base here they tuck all up let me see if I can get they get all the cables they all tuck into there really nice easy drain point so it's easy to clean up once they switch to the integrated cables it really added a lot of visual look to it you do have one additional and that is to route a dropper post let me know if you would like to see reviews on everything in between do you want the chain loops how to maintain a bike how to's of bikes little tips and tricks do you want to look at helmet reviews do you want gloves, gear, shorts? What do you want to know about bikes? And we can go that way. I'll show you a few trails around my local area. And yeah, just tell me where to stop and I'll narrow it in. Good luck.